Welcome back to the City Current Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're always honored to bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference, empowering the good. And we love talking about important projects, movies that power the good. So we're honored to be joined by Stephen Camp. He's the executive producer of Tenacious, the Jeremy Williams film. How are you doing, Stephen? I'm doing great, Jeremy. Thank you very much. Absolutely. So this has some ties to Memphis. We'll talk all about that. Very powerful higher purpose with this film and this project. So let's start out when you talk about putting together a film of this magnitude, and especially with Jeremy Williams, let's start with a little bit about Jeremy Williams. So go ahead and, and paint the picture of Jeremy Williams. Sure, sure. I've only got a short time here in this interview. I could take two hours. Uh, and that's the beauty of the story is this story is a story about Jeremy Williams, uh, who was the 2010 National High School Coach of the Year, which is a big deal. And uh, it's a, it's there was a documentary done uh, about the 2009 season uh, where Jeremy led uh, his team of underprivileged kids from Greenville, Georgia, uh, to an undefeated season. And the documentary was called A Season of Miracles. And what we're doing is we're going to go beyond that season and tell the life of Jeremy and Jennifer. Uh, we're going to go all the way back to when Jeremy was playing for the Memphis State Tigers uh, and follow that all the way through, uh, unfortunately, to March of last year, where Jeremy went home to, to be with Jesus and went to heaven. He passed away on March 13th last year. And um, very sad that he passed, but Jeremy lived an incredible life. He lived his life for God, and he lived his life for the love of his family. Jeremy played college football for Memphis State. After college, he went on to coach a team called Greenville, uh, in Greenville, Georgia, just outside of Columbus, Georgia. Um, uh, Jeremy started off that team was, we kind of joked that they were the bad news bears of football, kind of, so to speak. And uh, Jeremy led that team, as I said earlier, to an undefeated season in 2009, which was one year after he was diagnosed with ALS. So in, in 08, he was diagnosed. In 2009, he's already slurring his words, leaning on players, uh, they bought him a golf cart to get around and practice and things. And that season, Jeremy led that that team to an undefeated regular season. They won their first playoff game. They were one playoff game away from going to the Georgia Dome for the Georgia State playoffs. And they lost that game. And that's a great part of the story that Jeremy took his team out onto the field and prayed with his team and the opposing team. Uh, Jer Jeremy... Uh, was victory and defeat as much as he was victory and in, in, in a win on the field. And there are some highlights to the story that I'll touch on briefly now. After that 2009 season where Jeremy was was given the nice National High School Coach of the Year coach uh, by, by the NHSCA, um, I think you know this already, uh, America's Makeover Home Edition with Ty Pennington came in. Uh, there's a, The movie, we'll get into more of how that happened. That was incredible. Uh, how that all came together, but uh, Ty Pennington and his team came in and literally built Jeremy and Jennifer a new home and a new coaches facility, which had even more of an impact because in the course of the story, Jeremy and Jennifer had a healthy daughter, Josie, beautiful young lady. Uh, she's amazing. And then they had their son, Jacob. Well, Jacob was born with spina bifida and he's confined to a wheelchair for life. So Ty coming in and making that house wheelchair friendly for Jeremy also served a purpose that it was wheelchair friendly for Jacob as well. But it's an incredible story in a nutshell about Jeremy and Jacob, pardon me, Jeremy and Jennifer faced a lot of adversity, a son being born with spina bifida, a terminal illness in ALS. What a terrible disease. And we're gonna cover uh, almost in a medical journal kind of way uh, in this movie, the process and the debilitation and how terrible ALS is and how their family came together around Jeremy right up to the moment that he passed and went to heaven. And uh, we're super, super excited to cover all of the elements of their lives. And through all the adversity they faced, Jeremy, Jennifer, Jacob, Josie, and Jeremy Williams never, ever gave up on their faith in God. And that's the movie right there. 
Give us a, an idea of where we are, because when you talk about weaving all of these important storylines in, and yet in a you know finite amount of time that you have to, to be able to tell the story as a movie, and as you mentioned, there's a documentary, a book, you know, tens of millions saw that episode. So doing the story justice, pulling out those special moments, talk about kind of where you are in the process and weaving all these important storylines together and ultimately sure. figuring out what makes it or what doesn't. That's one of the things that I think is the most incredible aspect of, uh, so we had the book, we had the documentary, we knew the story, we knew what we wanted to do. A key part of this for us, Jeremy, was finding the right writer. We had to find a writer that could do just that, take this 20 years of their family's life and tell that story in 90 minutes. That's hard to do. And we brought in uh, a, a writer from the Writers Guild of America. Her name is Julia Fowler. Uh, Julia was a writer on Netflix's Country Comforts. Uh, she worked on some of their faith-based scenes. Julia is a Southern Baptist huge football fan from South Carolina, and we hit the jackpot. Um, we just got the first draft of the script uh, handed to us on Halloween of last year. And the first draft was one of the most incredible drafts for any script I've ever read. Of course, we're doing some revisions. Jennifer Williams uh, came in and I spent many hours with her going over notes just to stay true to the integrity of the story about what was actually said who was actually at a certain game or, or at a certain church event. But uh, Julia's done an incredible job of tying all of that in uh, to where we can tell that story in 90 minutes. And it's not just about that 2009 season, and it's not just about Ty Pennington and America's Makeover Home Edition coming in, but those are, of course, two major, major elements of the story. So um, our key to success there was bringing in the right writer and Julia Fowler to get it done. And she's done an incredible job. Talk about the production team on your end and some of the, the alignment already with some, you know, star power and experience in the uh, industry. Absolutely. So the first thing is basically, I think if I tell you how we even got wind of the story in the first place, uh, one of our production partners, Rick Cohen, Rick was the producer on the documentary season, season of a Lifetime. It's available on Amazon right now. And our production partner, Sheila Hawkins, was meeting with Rick on a completely different project. And while they were talking, Rick said, hey, look at this. And he played the trailer from Season of a Lifetime from the documentary for Sheila. Sheila saw it and was blown away and called myself and our business partner, Sam Sokolow. Sam is a two-time Emmy-nominated producer who's an executive producer on the Genius Series. Uh, he's been nominated for two Emmys for that season, side by side with Ron Howard, to give you a, an idea of the, of the depth of that, of that series. It was the first ever scripted television series on Nat Geo. And Sheila brought it to us and said, guys, watch this. Uh, I just saw it and it blew me away. So Sam and I watched uh, the trailer for the documentary and then went in and watched the documentary and we called Rick and said, Rick, I, there's something here. This story needs to be told. Every one of us, there's four of us producers, myself as the executive producer, Sam Sokolow, who is the two-time Emmy-nominated television producer, Rick Cohen, who produced uh, the original documentary, and Sheila Hawkins, our partner. And Sheila's, Sheila's our Southern belle. Uh, she's also from South Carolina. So Sheila represents our target audience in this movie which is a 35 to 65 year old Southern Baptist woman in the Christian space, that's our target audience. So um, uh, we put together a team, we contacted the Williams family. And I'll tell you something, Jeremy, the, the one thing that always resonates with me was the very first meeting that we had with Jeremy and Jennifer, Jeremy was still alive at the time. They made it clear to us that they don't want this movie to be made for the purpose of them making money or becoming famous. Uh, of people knowing them when they walk down the street or go anywhere. They had one goal and their one goal, and they made that clear to us, was to glorify God and the kingdom with every step we take in this project. And fortunately, that kind of fits exactly how Rick, Sheila, Sam, and I saw it in the first place. We're going to be producing a film that is absolutely going to be a faith-based movie, but it's also going to be an action-packed football film it's going to be a little bit of a medical journal on 
what a terrible disease ALS is, uh, but it's also going to be um, uh, a very, very inspirational football movie with a, with a, with a faith-based angle. And at the same time, Jeremy, we're also going to be creating church materials that things like Bible studies, we're working on a 40, a 40 day devotional right now. We're in the process of approval with that, with Jennifer Williams as we speak. So we're hoping to publish a 40 day devotional prior to the movie, even being shot before a camera rolls. And then once we do produce the film, we'll pull Bible studies and never give up on your faith in God. Um, as you're well aware, especially being there in Memphis, Jeremy, um, a lot of us face adversity and adversity has many different faces. For Jeremy and Jennifer, it was spina bifida, it was ALS. For others, it's racism, it's it's financial strain, it's cancer, I mean, who knows? So we intend to use this story to motivate others to never ever give up on their faith in God. And Jeremy, Jacob, Josie, and Jennifer never ever gave up on their faith in God, no matter what adversity they faced. Talk about the power of, but also the responsibility on your end with this being a true story. So, you know, this is a, this is a real life story versus a fictional story that you can embellish and, you know, do over here. Talk about the power of that for the audience, but also to the responsibility on your end to be accurate and tell it, you know, in a truthful way. Absolutely. That was one of my responsibilities was after we received the first draft, I spent many hours with Jennifer and Jacob and Josie. We literally went word by word, line by line through the entire script and, and sent and compiled notes that we then sent to our writer, Julia Fowler, who's in, in the process now of the second draft based on the revisions and the notes we submitted. It is, I have felt it more so than ever. For us, normally a true story, it can be a little bit harder uh, because there's things that are wrapped in a true story that might not come to the surface till later that you're not aware of. In this situation, the fact that it's a true story was a blessing because the lives that Jennifer and Jeremy lived and the kids lived was truly an inspiration to others and will be. We didn't have to hollow out, ho Hollywoodize this film in any capacity. As a matter of fact, we had so much, so many different aspect, aspects of this story that were worthy of being in the film, we had to go in and select and choose what we could actually put in the movie due to our limitations on time. There's so their story is so incredible uh, that that that's been our our hardest, I think, problem for Julia is to pick and choose what is actually going to make the movie and what isn't. And uh, but like as I said earlier, Julie's done an incredible job, and we're we're prepared to get this done and do it right. So when you talk about getting it done and doing it right, there's a way that the community can support your efforts. And so talk about the budget, talk about some of those pieces on the business side, but then how the community can help. And so when you talk about the faith community, the business community who wants this story told, and for those in Memphis too, there's a the big storyline in Memphis, how can we support this project and this effort? Sure. Well, I, I appreciate you asking that because that's all, that's one of the most important factors in our ability to get this done. So uh, we've hired a line producer who came in and created a budget for us that is very accurate, utilizing all the unions, utilizing a 27 day shoot. It's going to be a five and a half week shoot. We're going to we'll be rolling cameras for uh, 12 to 16 hours a day for 27 days when we finally do roll cameras on this movie. And the where we need help is in raising awareness for the story and finding others that will help us from a financial standpoint, raise the funding we need in order to tell this movie. So our budget was, it's a, it's a low budget independent film in Hollywood standards, but it's a $4.862 million budget. So we need to raise $4.8 million uh, in order to, to meet our goals with the budget that we have now, which includes recognizable Hollywood talent. You know, uh, that's one of the stigmas of faith-based films there's a lot of faith-based films don't have that Hollywood talent, that A-list talent. And our relationship with our producer, Sam Sokolow, will help us. He has access to every major studio and every major agency in Hollywood. So our goal is to tell the story, and it's true, and not deviate from the truth, 
bring in recognizable Hollywood talent to do that. And then, of course, build a, a slew of materials. But I'm going to be coming into, into Memphis uh, this spring when we're finishing the script now. Once the script is finished, we're going to start holding meetings in Memphis, in Nashville, in Franklin, Tennessee, uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, Columbus, Georgia, Greenville, Georgia. We've already started uh, uh, planning some of those meetings. And very fortunately, out of the $4.8 million budget, before the script is even finished, Jeremy, I have $1.2 million committed already. So when I hit the ground to finalize the financing, I don't have to go to, to individuals and say, hey, take a chance on us and be the first money in. We already have 25% of the budget committed, which is a strong start. And we have some very unique structuring, financial structuring um, things we'll be able to utilize. For example, we're shooting this movie in Georgia. Georgia has an incredible uh, incentive for filmmakers like ourselves. And uh, I think you're aware it's a 30% incentive. So 30% of what we spend on the movie that we actually spend in Georgia will get back. So we can leverage that as well to help us get to our goal. So the place where we're going to need the help the most is when the, the script is finished and I'm on the ground in Memphis, Columbus, Atlanta, is, is having others bring groups of people together that we can present this to and let them make up their own mind if uh, and when they might want to financially commit to being part of this story and being an investor in this project. We also will be launching a crowdfunding campaign uh, in mid-February. So we're going to give everybody the opportunity, whether you know it's an accredited investor or someone who maybe went to church with Jeremy and Jennifer that might only have the ability to put in $10. But you know what? That $10 will help us get to our goal. Yeah, that's awesome. And to your point, the ability to include everyone as both, you know, to honor the memory and the legacy of Jeremy, but also to, to be a part of something special that can inspire literally millions and millions and millions of people around the world is, is truly special and remarkable. So Talk about next steps. Where do we go to reach out, to learn more, to reach out to you? When you talk about, you know, being a part of these meetings and coordination, where do we go to reach out and connect in with you and your team? Sure. So I think there's three ways uh, that someone could learn more about this project now. One is we have a little website up. It's www.coachjeremywilliams.com. On the website, we have a trailer uh, to the documentary that's already been finished. Uh, it's a strong trailer. It'll tell you a lot about the story, a lot about Jeremy, and you can actually see the progression uh, of, of ALS uh, on him physically uh, through that documentary. So the website is coachjeremywilliams.com. We do have a Facebook page, which is also Coach Jeremy Williams. And we have a lot of information, including recently a post we made uh, about Jeremy when he was playing for the Memphis State Tigers uh, back in 1990. And uh, uh, so our Facebook page. And then when you're on our Facebook page and you're on our website, uh, there's information for people to reach out to me directly as the executive producer uh, of the project. I won't put my cell phone number up right now, but I will uh, say that my email address is Stephen, S-T-E-V-E-N, at nice mediastudios.com and anyone whether it's a, a pastor that might be interested in sharing uh information about this with their church or maybe interested in showing the movie at their church uh in 2024 when it's released whatever for any questions i invite anyone to reach out to me directly at steven at nice media studios.com regardless of what your question or potential area uh may be to help us achieve our goals here yeah, absolutely awesome. Well, I think as a community, it's one of those that uh, let's make this happen. So definitely appreciate everything you're doing. Stephen Camp, executive producer of Tenacious, the Jeremy Williams film. Thank you, Stephen, for all you and your amazing team are doing. Best of luck with this ahead. I hope that we can get behind this and make it happen for sure. Thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate it, Jeremy. Thank you so much. God bless.